Hello, my name is Jason Saba, and I'll be talking about social learning theory today. So this theory starts with a man by the name of Ronald Akers, who is an American criminologist who developed the theory. Now, an initial look at this theory, and you might think that Akers' theory is uh, similar to Sutherland's differential association theory. And although it's true that um, Akers' theory originates from Sutherland's theory and they share a lot in common, Akers' social learning theory goes beyond looking at only at favorable definitions that lead to people being delinquent and focuses on the mechanisms that lead people to either continue or discontinue delinquency. The general difference between the two theories is that for some, the sociological processes of adopting favorable definition, definitions moves in pro-social directions and others it moves in anti-social directions. The reason for this is operant conditioning, which will be discussed soon. The definition of his theory is it's a theory designed to explain how people learn criminal behavior using the psychological principles of operant conditioning. According to Walsh and Jorgensen, 2018, there are four principles in social learning theory that are believed to affect an individual's probability of committing crime. The first is differential association, which is when a person differentially associates with others who commit, model, and support violations of social and legal norms. The second and most important is differential reinforcement, which is when deviant behavior is differentially reinforced over behavior that is in conformity to the norm. More will be explained on this. The third is imitation, which is when a person is more exposed to and observes more deviant models than conforming models. The third is an excess of definitions, which is when a person's own learned definitions are favorable toward committing deviant acts. <clears throat> so differential reinforcement is based on operant psychology. So operant psychology is a theory of learning which states that behavior is governed by its consequences. The consequences can be either positive or negative. The positive would be a reward and the negative would be a punishment. With this concept, behavior is either reinforced or it is punished depending on the consequences we receive. So operant psychology states that behavior that has positive consequences for a person will, will reinforce that behavior which means that the actor will continue to repeat those behaviors in similar situations. In line with this, is if, if a behavior is punished, it is less likely to be repeated and will be eliminated eventually by the actor. According to Walsh and Jordanson, 2018, the most effective reinforcers and punishers are socially derived from a person's intimate social groups. So think of this as, think of operant psychology like training a dog. If you give a dog a treat every time they do a trick you want them to do, they will associate doing this trick with receiving the treat. This reinforcing factor in this case would be the treat. The behavior being reinforced is the trick. The dog will continue to do the positive behavior, which is the trick, in order to receive the reinforcing reward, which is the treat. Similar to this, if you were to punish the dog for a behavior, let's just say peeing on the couch, the dog would associate the punishment with peeing on the couch and that negative behavior will eventually be eliminated. So this is a simplified example because operant psychology works slightly differently in humans. In humans, our reinforcers and punishments for our behaviors are socially derived from our intimate social groups. So we'll go through this next part quickly. Essentially, there's different types of reinforcers and punishments. So there's positive and negative reinforcement. Positive reinforcement is when something positive is received. Negative reinforcement is when something punishment is punishing is avoided. And then there's positive and negative punishment punishers. So positive punishment is when something punished is applied, and negative punishment is when something rewarding is lost. For our first example, we're going to talk about gangs. So gangs are a form of, of an intimate social group. A person involved in a gang activity is being socialized to that specific gang's moral codes. For the sake of this example, We'll say that our gangster is Dave. So Dave is a person that just that has just been admitted into a gang and he commits his first illegal act, a drive-by shooting on a rival gang member. After the shooting, Dave receives praise from all the other gang members in the gang, including the leaders, and he realizes that this act caused his fellow gang members to respect him and like him. Dave enjoys his praise and wants to keep experiencing it and wants to move up through the ranks in the gang in order to be more respected. 
Day's behavior of illegal activity in the gang is being positively reinforced by his social group, which is the gang, and therefore it is likely that Day will, will continue to commit gang-related crimes. Our second example is a girl by the name of Katie. Katie is a 22-year-old senior at one of the most prestigious universities in the country. She is the captain of the girls' varsity soccer team and maintains a 4.0 GPA while also volunteering in her community. Katie has a bright future ahead of her since she plans to attend law school and become a lawyer upon graduation. She is loved and valued by all of her teammates, coaches, and families. One day, Katie is driving home from school when she gets pulled over by the city police for speeding. When the officer approaches her, approaches her car, he notices the strong smell of black tar heroin coming from the car and sees a handgun, a white bag, a weighing scale, and copious amounts of money in the back seat of her car. Upon searching the car, the officer discovers multiple pounds of heroin packaged in a manner that is meant to sell the heroin. Katie is arrested and charged with possession of heroin with intent to sell, as well as illegal possession of firearms. Katie is then expelled from school and kicked off the soccer team, and she also spent some time in prison since she committed a felony. Her parents kick her out of the house, and none of her teammates, friends, or family wish to spend any time with her or be associated with her. Now this is an example of positive punishment, because the consequences for a socially negative action is something that is undesirable. In this case, it would be the prison term. For Katie, it is not only the prison term that is her punishment. Her punishment is sends more internally by the social ostracism and disappointment by her social groups. And based on this positive punishment, Katie is, likely, is less likely to continue her deviant acts because they are socially frowned upon by her, social, so, her intimate social groups. So the critiques of this theory, as Walsh, Walsh and Georgensen reference, are that SLT, social learning theory, neglects individual differences in the ease in the ease or difficult so it neglects individual differences in the ease or difficulty in which people learn so people have their own individual thoughts and processes and SLT does not offer much into why individuals commit crimes outside of intimate social groups and why some do not because certainly these individuals exist examples of this would be an impulsive person who commits crimes and those individuals who value long-term rewards for good behavior is, so social learning theory does not answer why some individuals outside of their intimate social groups feel motivated to be good members of society, but others choose deviance. So, some criminologists argue that this is due to certain individuals lacking individuality and instead their personalities are represented in certain deviant groups where their person, personality traits are reinforced. In response to this, Ager says that individuals in low crime groups do not differ from individuals in high crime groups in terms of their probability of being exposed to criminal environments. As, the, as Walsh and Georgians in 2018 state, is that the issue with Ager's response is that it is an explanation regarding environments, and not dif different environments, but it doesn't explain uh, different individuals. So the implications of social learning theory. So the implications for social learning theory are essentially um, differential association theory solutions. However, differential association solutions, such as trying to change a culture, have had little to no success in reducing crime. Crime is generally prevalent in low, in low income areas with broken families. So this leads people to search for intimate social groups that reinforce their behaviors. So if, S so if SLT is true, the solutions lie in empowering and rebuilding those areas and families in an effort to try and minimize people from seeking deviant social groups and pursue methods of success that are in alignment with positive social groups. This is not an overnight process, however, and it will likely take years to have any noticeable differences in crime from deviant, deviant social groups. The realignment of groups must emphasize that there are methods of reinforcement that allow that can allow normally deviant social groups to achieve their desired rewards through legitimate socially acceptable means. This method is not foolproof because there will always be outliers in socially deviant groups. So for academic references, I reference Walsh and Georgensen 2018, their book on Criminology and Essentials, third edition from Sage. All 
Information regarding the theory was derived from Walsh and Jorgensen. All photographs on, in this video were provided by various copyright free websites by searching for the photographs in Google Images. Music was Sweet as Honey by Topher and Alexa and Mona Warlick titled New Day. Both are copyright free, royalty free, retrieved from SoundCloud. So credits, I would like to thank myself. I am the creator of this video, as well as my instructor, Dr. Elizabeth Velasquez and the University CSULA. So this video was made within the context of this course, CRIM 303004, Theories and Perspectives, October 16th, 2019. Thank you.